Hi, I'm Maddie, and this is my ES50 final project. Boxing is one of my hobbies, and I've been doing it a lot while sheltering in place, and so I wanted to do a project related to it. Specifically, compared to running and biking, where you get very quantitative feedback at the end of how fast did I go, how fast did I go compared to yesterday, did I work harder than yesterday, it's hard to get the same kind of feedback for boxing, and so I wanted to implement a punch counter to give the user real-time feedback about both how hard they're hitting the bag as well as how fast they're hitting the bag. The goal being that the user can see, oh, I'm starting to lag partway through this workout, I really need to step it up, um, and being able to get that feedback in the moment rather than waiting until the end of the workout and seeing, oh, I should have worked harder. Um, and the reason I measure both speed and intensity is because they're different aspects of one's technique that you might be working on. Um, and so it's not fair to say I'm hitting slowly, I'm not doing well because you might be hitting the bag really hard. Um, and so I use two different devices to tr uh, try to test the pros and cons and to see um, how, th how one might implement a device like this. So the first method that I used was a force sensi sensor, a force sensitive resistor, as pictured here. And the way it works is that the user hits the resistor um, and it detects that the user hit it and that's counted as a punch. As you can see here, when the force sensitive resistor gets hit, Arduino is able to see that the voltage it was sending through the resistor is less because there is um, greater resistance. and. I keep a, a running tally of how many hits there have been in the last three seconds and use that to extrapolate out um, how many hits per minute there are. And that is then displayed on this uh, seven segment display that you can see on the bottom right. And there's a red LED to the left of that display that lights up based on the intensity with which uh, the resistor is hit. So one of the best parts about it is that it's very accurate because it basically has one purpose and that is to detect if, if it's been hit. However, for actually detecting the force with which uh, the user hits the sensor, it's not so great. Um, one of the main reasons is that where you hit the sensor uh, actually has a big effect on uh, what the reading is. So you could tap a corner of the sensor and it would give you a massive reading, but if you punch the middle of it, it might not give you as high a reading. And now we'll see it in action. You can see the counter on top of the bag. My second approach, pictured here, was to use an accelerometer hanging from the bottom of the bag to detect punches and the force of punches. I chose to hang it from the bottom of the bag because the bag is anchored at the top and so the bag swings the most at the bottom and so it would be easiest to detect these changes in acceleration with the device at the bottom of the bag. And unlike the force sensor, this is out of the way uh, so the user isn't directly punching the sensor. It's a more involved detection of uh, punches and, and force than just the force sensor where it was pretty clear when it got when the sensor was hit. Here I'm detecting changes in acceleration. So what I'm looking for is large jumps in the acceleration um, that essentially come from changing in direction um, and these are, signal that the bag has been hit and the direction of the bag has been changed. So you can see this looks pretty similar to the setup with the force sensor and that we still have the seven segment display wired up the same way to the Arduino. The one difference being, of course, there's no force sensor here. We're using an accelerometer. So there's two new devices here. The one on the left is the accelerometer, which detects uh, the rate of change of the position of the device. Uh, and then the device on the right is the level shifter. And that's just used to change the voltage from the Arduino uh, so that it can work with the accelerometer. From a user perspective, an advantage of this device over the force sensor is that you just have to hit the bag. You don't have to hit the bag in a specific spot. Um, and also you're not hitting an actual device, and so it's a little more durable. Uh, it's also much better at detecting the force with which the bag is hit as opposed to the uh, force sensor, which sort of gave back random readings. On the other hand, the reading is a little more noisy in terms of counts, and so sometimes the bag swinging is detected as a punch, even if the bag wasn't actually punched in that moment. And here it is in action. You can see the counter on the bottom right, and the numbers are pretty comparable to what we saw with the force sensor. So it was super cool to build a project that I actually could use in my daily life, and I think both of these had a lot of potential. It was really interesting to work on the two of them and to kind of see how the many of the problems I faced in implementing one, I also faced in implementing the other. Um, but then at the end of the day, their advantages and disadvantages really complemented each other. Uh, so I think if I was going to take this a step further, I might work on refining one. Uh, but the, another idea that was floated was, can you take the two of them and kind of put them together um, and use their, use their advantages and disadvantages 
to cancel each other out and have a really accurate sensor. Uh, so thank you for watching my video.